will you do on the day of judgment when you stand before God and you don't have the precious blood of Christ by which we are washed and sanctified and renewed to plead your case before the God of heaven, before his everlasting throne, his everlasting kingdom. If you die in your sins, Jesus said you'll be thrown into an everlasting hell. Understand this today. That's your one heartbeat from hell. Understand that. Though the, the birds are chirping today, it's a beautiful day in Nebraska. Understand this. If you died right now, you'd be in hell apart from Christ. That's the reality. No matter how good you feel right now, no matter how comfortable you are right now, the Bible says if you do not have the Lord Jesus, his wrath abides upon you this very moment. Turn and live. Turn every one of you from your evil ways. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. He says, turn, turn ye everyone from your evil ways. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Where will you go when you die? Where will you spend eternity? As God brought you here, it's just a moment for this. To warn your soul to flee from the wrath to come. What will be the end of you if you die apart from Christ? You'll wake up in an everlasting hell. There's going to be no music there. There's not going to be any laughter there. You need a Savior today to turn from your evil ways and trust in the only Savior of men, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. He says, I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. See, folks, where will you go when you die? Where will you spend eternity? As you are guaranteed to enter into this stadium today because you have a ticket, you're not going to be denied entry. You are guaranteed to enter into this stadium today. How certain are you that you will be led into God's everlasting kingdom on the day of judgment when he opens the books and everything you've ever done being recorded in the all-seeing eye of God. You will have no one to plead your case if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. If you die apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and you stand at the great white throne judgment guilty before him, the Bible says you'll be thrown and dragged into an everlasting hell. That's why you need a Savior today. You need to understand that you are a filthy rag in the eyes of God. All of us are as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. The Lord Jesus Christ came to the world to save sinners from their sin. You understand that? That he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He desires that the wicked turn and live, to turn from their evil ways, to trust in the only Savior of men, the one who gave himself for our sins, shed his holy blood on a Roman cross, was crucified, died, rose again, and now he sits at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for his people. All power given unto him in heaven and earth, and one day you're going to stand before him. Your knee will bow, your tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and if you don't have him as your Abba Father, Oh, folks, you face God as your judge. Make sure you're right with God today, folks. It's a very urgent thing here today. Very serious. It's not going to matter who won this football game in 100 years. Because matter of fact, just think about this, folks. 100 years from now, every one of us are going to be dead. What a sobering, terrifying thought. 100 years from now, every one of us is going to be dead. You ever think about that? Consider your ways today. Consider your ways that you're one heartbeat from hell apart from Christ. Glory to his name, the Lord Jesus Christ. The only one who has immortality, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, no man can see my face and live. Why is that? Why can no man see God's face and live? Because we are all as an unclean thing. When an unclean creature faces a holy triune God, he falls at his feet as dead as John stood before the Lord Jesus Christ in all his glory. He says, I fell at his feet as dead. What do you think you and I are going to do if we die apart from Christ? If we die apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, it would be better for you to have never been born than to die in this condition. An enemy of God, you must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. The question is, what are you born of today? Are you born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or are you still in your sin, guilty before God? The Bible says, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart... You treasure up for yourselves wrath against the day of wrath of the revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. You understand that? That God will render to everyone according to his deeds. You understand that? That the books will be opened, another book will be opened, which is the book of life. And the dead will be judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Everything you've done has been written, recorded in heaven. 
And one day this book will be opened, shed abroad before all of humanity. You will stand before God and answer for everything you've ever done. If your sins are not bought for, paid for, washed and cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, tossed into the sea of forgetfulness, to be cast into an everlasting hell, it will be better for you to have never been born. As you'll suffer the wrath of Almighty God forever. You understand that? You understand that? The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. He says, consider this. You that forget God, lest he tear you into pieces and there be none to deliver. You understand that the first time, you understand that the first time Christ came, he came in mercy. He came in mercy. The second time he comes, he's coming to destroy all his adversaries. You understand that? And he's not a baby in a manger anymore when he, when he comes back. He's coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance on all those who do not know God and who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, They shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. You see, folks, you must be reconciled to God. Turn every one of you from your evil ways. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The question is, are you saved today? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb, the only one that can save your soul? Are you right with Him? The only thing that's going to matter when you come to die is where your sin's forgiven before God. You understand that? It's not going to matter how much you had in your 401k. It's not going to matter how much you left your children because they're going to die and leave their wealth to others. You understand how vain this life is? We're all just waiting to die. Naked we came into this world and naked we shall go. From dust we came to dust we shall return. You understand that you have two appointments? And it is death and judgment. And you're going to stand before God and answer for everything you've ever done. If you died right now, you'd wake up in hell apart from Christ. Understand that. True love warns you to flee from the wrath to come. He says, as I live, saith the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his evil ways and live. There's not a just man upon earth that does good and does not sin. There is none righteous. No, not one. There's none that understands. There's none that seek after God. The Bible says they've all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that does good. No, not one. You understand that you've sinned against God. You've stored up His wrath every day of your life if you're not in Christ. And one day that wrath will be poured out upon you like fire if you die in His condition. He says, turn every one of you from your evil ways, lest His fury be poured out like fire because of the evil of your doings. He says, turn and live. Turn and live, declares the Lord. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There's not. The, the Bible says they've all turned aside. They've all together become filthy. There's none that does good. No, not one. And what does it say? When God looked down from heaven. It says, God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek after God. And what has God found? That they've all turned aside, they've all together become filthy. That there's not a just man upon earth that does good. We're all an unclean thing, separated from God because of sin. Understand that his hand is stretched out to you today to save you from the coming wrath and judgment of God. You understand that you're one heartbeat from standing before the one who gave you your very life, the one who hangs the earth upon nothing, the one who counts the stars and knows them all by name, and how gracious God is to send people here today to warn you to flee from the wrath to come. This is the love of God here today, to send people from all across the country to warn you to flee from the wrath to come. How urgent is the word here today then? Turn and live. Turn and live, declares the Lord. He says, repent ye and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, lest iniquity become your ruin and hell become your lot. Jesus says, what shall a man be profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall it profit you if you gain everything in this life and go to hell? The fact of the matter is, it's a very sobering thing. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Because right now, whether you like it or not, what you do here is preparing for where you go thereafter. You reap what you sow. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. He that sows to the, to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. What are you storing up today? Are you right with God? Are you right with your Maker? 
Because one day you're going to stand before Him. You need the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from the coming wrath of God. The Bible says we're all is an unclean thing. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You understand that? that nobody is excluded from this statement. Matter of fact, every one of us is included. We're all guilty before God. The Bible says every mouth is stopped. And all the world is guilty before God. You must be born again. Reconciled to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. You understand that? That you can't bring God anything to save yourself. The only way you can be saved is to trust in the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only Savior of men. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father except through Him. You see, the only way you're going to enter into this stadium today is because you have a ticket. The only way you're going to be entered into heaven is if you have the Lord Jesus Christ to plead your case before the God of heaven. Are you guaranteed entry into His kingdom? Just like you're guaranteed entry here today because you have a ticket? You need the ticket of the Lord Jesus Christ to let you into His everlasting kingdom. If not, He'll throw you into hell. That's the reality. You must be born again. Turn and live. The Lord is gracious. He's slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. But He says, I will not at all acquit the wicked. He will not let the guilty go unpunished. Or else God will be a corrupt judge. You see, how gracious is God to send messengers here today to warn you to flee from the wrath to come. You're not here by chance today. Hey, you must be reconciled to God. Turn from your evil ways and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's why you're going to die. And you realize you have a number upon your head. It's the number of your days. And one day you're going to pass from one to zero. And you're going to die. You're going to come to die. You're going to come to terms with your sin. And sin leads to death. That's why we die. You must be born again. Reconciled to God. God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. You understand? He came in mercy. He came in mercy the first time. The second time he comes, he's coming in flaming fire, the Bible says, to destroy all those outside of covenant with God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. As the Bible says, our God is a consuming fire, and by fire and by his sword will the Lord judge all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. You see, folks, the only question that's going to matter when you come to die is were your sins forgiven before God? You must answer that today. Whether today or upon your deathbed, you must come to terms with your sin that one day you're going to die and stand before the one who gave you your very life. If you don't have the Savior, the only Savior of men, you'll wake up in hell. That is the reality, folks. Jesus says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior in whom we have redemption through His blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven, not to do his own will, but the will of him that sent him. And he says, this is the will of him that sent him, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and God will raise him up again on the last day. You must be born again, reconciled to God. Turn and live. Turn from your evil ways and trust in the only Savior of men, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, folks, I'll say it again. The only way you're going to be entered into this stadium today is because you have a ticket. You are guaranteed entry today because you have a ticket. The only way you're going to be entered into God's everlasting kingdom and that you will not be denied entry is through the precious blood of the Lamb. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners from their sin, not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. He fulfilled the law of God perfectly. He fulfilled it to its uttermost perfection. Every jot and tittle was fulfilled, the law and the prophets. He fulfilled the law of God for us, was crucified, died and rose again, took the full penalty of sin, bore their guilt, bore their shame, bore the wrath of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And that righteousness that he fulfilled upon earth will be imputed to you by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of men. Understand this today, that your one heart beat from hell apart from Christ. Turn from your evil ways and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says the scripture has concluded all under sin, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world is guilty before God. Do you understand this? 
that there is not a just man upon earth. There is not one righteous man upon earth that does good and does not also sin. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord hath laid upon Christ the iniquity of us all. The Lord Jesus Christ pacified and satisfied the wrath of God for the sins of his people. That's why he says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. But he says, If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. You understand that? That you will be held accountable for your life of rebellion against him if you're not in Christ today. If you are not in Christ today, the fact of the matter is the wrath of God abides upon you this very moment. As the Bible says, he that believes on the Son has everlasting life, and he that does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. That is the reality, folks. You must come to terms with this today. That you have sinned against God, you're guilty before Him. You need somebody to fulfill the law of God for you because every one of us is incapable of God's divine righteousness that He commands. We are all as an unclean thing. We are filthy rags in the eyes of God. And we cannot live up to His expectations. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ came to the world. He came into the world to fulfill the law of God for us. He says, I... We must fulfill our righteousness. When John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus, it is for me to fulfill all righteousness. He came into the world to fulfill all righteousness. Every jot and tittle of God's law was fulfilled and obeyed in the life and obedience of Jesus Christ. And he was obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. And he commands you to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if you repent and believe on him, you may be saved. How can you escape the damnation of hell? It is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That is the only way you can be saved. That is the only salvation of men. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. You understand this? That there is no remission, no forgiveness, no washing away of sin unless there be bloodshed. And that blood was shed upon the cross of the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. And he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. You understand that? That he's coming again to judge the living and the dead, to judge the world in righteousness, to lay before him all who have ever lived, to stand before him and answer for everything they have ever done. You see, God is the judge of all the earth. So he therefore must judge righteously. As he shall lay before him both rich and poor, small and high, and the books will be opened. Well, what is that book? It is the book of all your deeds that you have done in the eyes of God. Everything that you have done in secret or abroad will be brought forth to the light as the eternal books will be opened and you will answer for everything that is written according that is written to your name. Everything you've done under heaven has been recorded. And what will you do? What will be the end thereof of you if you die apart from the Lord Jesus Christ? It'd be better for you to have never been born than to die an enemy of God, to suffer the wrath of God forever and ever. You need the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from this wretched condition. Do you understand? Do you understand how filthy rag we are in the eyes of God. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But the Bible says man drinks iniquity like water. We are all as a filthy rag in the eyes of God. We just store up his wrath continually. But God came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. He came to the world to save sinners from this wretched condition. To save them from the wrath to come, as John the Baptist said, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? 
Even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bear forth good fruit is hewn down and thrown in the fire. In other words, the axe is laid at the root of the trees. The time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Do you understand this today? If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? You need a savior today, folks. You need the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from this wretched condition. This wretched condition of sin. That you have a disease worse than AIDS. You have a disease worse than cancer. And that is the sickness of sin. You see, cancer will only kill your body, but sin will damn your soul to eternal hell. You understand this, folks? Every one of us has a disease worse than cancer. A disease worse than heart disease. Because those things can only kill your body, but sin will damn your soul to an eternal hell. As Jesus says, I will tell you whom to fear. Fear him who has power to cast both body and soul into hellfire. What shall a man or a woman be profited if they shall gain the whole world and lose their soul in hellfire? The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Understand this today, that you're guilty before God. You're going to stand before him and answer for everything you've ever done. You're guilty for, before him today. You're guilty before God. And what will you do with this guilty verdict? What will you do with the sin that is, that is upon your head? What will you do with this guilty verdict here today? Turn and live. He says, as I live, saith the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his evil way and live. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Why will you die in your sins when a Savior is given to you here today? Why will you reject the only Savior of men? Why will you turn to God the back and not the face? When salvation is given to you here today, he says, He that being often reproved and hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Oh, but you're given the remedy here today. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one that can cure you of this sickness of sin that will damn your soul to hell if you die apart from Christ. Understand this, that if you died right now, you'd wake Jesus up in hell. Christ was a Jew. If you died he right now, Jew. you'd wake up in hell apart he was a from Christ. Jew, like me. You must be Shalom born Habibi. again. You don't There's get not it. You don't a get just it. man upon Shalom earth that Habibi. does good he was a and Jew, does buddy. not sin. You must be born again. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And what is the question? The question is, what are you born of today? Are you still born of this flesh, of this sin, of this defiled temple before God? Or are you born again, born of the life of Christ, washed in the blood of the Lamb? He says, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, for thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his holy blood to save wicked sinners like you and I from the wrath to come. What is the wrath to come? It is the eternal wrath that shall be laid upon all those who die apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you die apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll wake up in hell. That is the reality, folks. So true love warns you to flee from the wrath to come. True love warns you that your house is on fire, your land and everything you owe will be laid desolate, and you're going to stand before God and answer for everything you've ever done. What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and vanishes away. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Understand this today, that you are one cancer diagnosis from death. You understand this? You understand how frail these bodies are? That you and I are as frail creatures in the eyes of God, waiting for the day of our death. You must...
be reconciled to God. Dear friends, as I said, true love warns. True love warns. As John the Baptist came into the world, he beheld a filthy and wicked, perverse generation. He says, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And that's what we're doing here today. Who has warned you to flee? There's no mockery in hell. There's no mockery in hell. Nothing but weeping and gnashing of teeth forever and ever. Where the fire is never quenched and the worm never dies. There's no blue sky in hell. There's no beautiful sunset in hell. Nothing but pitchness of blackness of darkness forever. Everlasting contempt and regret. Dying in your sins, weeping and gnashing of teeth, suffering the wrath of God forever. What a fearful thing. It'd be better for you to have never been born than to die in this condition, an enemy of God. Do you understand this today? That it would be better for you to have never been born than to die apart from the Lord Jesus Christ as you'll suffer the wrath of God forever. As Judas, Jesus, cursed the day of Judas's birth, a man who betrayed him, he said it'd be better for him to have never been born and what will be the end of you as you have your own betrayal of the Son of Man, trampling underfoot the Son of God, the only one that can save your soul, and die in your sins and go to hell forever? What shall a man or woman be profited if they shall gain the whole world and lose their soul in hellfire? Do you feel good now? You look good now. You feel good. We're having a good time today. The fact of the matter is if you died right now apart from Christ, you'd wake you up in hell. feel good? That is the reality. You, you must see good. the urgency here today, you don't the feel call good, to you repentance remember. and faith towards God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man shall enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. He says, but the thief comes not before to steal and to kill and destroy. Okay. But the Lord Jesus has come that we might have life and to have it more abundantly. He says, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Come to the living waters today. He says, but my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn them out cisterns, broken cisterns, which can hold no water. Oh, folks, you've forsaken the Lord. You've stored up his wrath. You need a Savior today to save you from this wretched condition. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave himself for our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes... We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord hath laid upon Christ the iniquity of us all to bring us back to God. Do you understand this? That there's mercy for you here today. There is mercy for you in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you repent of your sin and trust in the only Savior of men, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. What a glorious thing this is. What a glorious statement that the Lord Jesus came not to call the righteous. He came to call the sick. He came to call the guilty. He came to call those who are at enmity with him to be reconciled to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. What a glorious salvation. Oh, hallelujah. What a Savior we have in Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father except through him. You understand this, that there's only one way to God and a million ways to hell. And the only way to God is through the Lord Jesus Christ to repent of your sins and to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from the wrath to come. Even now, the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree. In other words, the harvest is here. The harvest has come. And are you ready to stand before God? What will your tree be found of? Will it be a tree of righteousness, planting of the Lord? Or are you going to be trees whose fruit withers, twice dead, plucked up by the roots because of sin? As the Bible says, even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bear forth good fruit is hewn down and thrown into the fire. The first time Christ came, he came in mercy. 
He came in mercy. He came to forgive men of their sin, to forgive them of their iniquities. He was not imputing their trespasses unto them. But the second time he comes, he's coming in ruthless judgment. Do you understand this? That the long-suffering, the patience of the Lord Jesus Christ is the salvation of his people. And that's why you're walking here today. As God is not willing that any of his people should perish, but that they should all come to repentance. And right now, folks, the only reason you're alive is to know him personally. Right now you're chasing the wind apart from Christ. If God was really Understand this. Games, fuck Understand fuck this. Fuck the fool has said in his heart there is no God. You think this building built itself? You think this building built itself with all its perfection and all of its design? How much more complicated is your human body? How much more complicated is your human body? And yet they say it had no designer. Oh, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. As the Bible says, they have all turned aside. They've all together become filthy. There's none that does good. No, not one. As the Bible says, there's none righteous. No, not one. There's none that understands. There's none that seek after God. They've all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that does good. No, not one. You must be born again. Reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not a just man upon earth that does good and does not sin. You must be born again, reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other name. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God, even our Father. And who is your Father today? Jesus. You need a Savior in Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, look unto me and be saved on all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Turn and live. Thank you. Turn from your evil ways and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. As the Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord hath laid upon Christ the iniquity of us all to bring us back to God, to reconcile us to him. We pray you in Christ that be ye reconciled to God. For God made him, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin. He opened not his mouth. He went to the, to the cross as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He suffered the wrath of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was despised of sinners. Brought into the hands of sinful men, he was delivered for our offenses, for our sins, but was raised again for our justification. And he commands you to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. As he says, at one point God winked at, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Because he has appointed a day when he will judge the world in righteousness to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's given us assurance unto us all. And that he raised him from the dead. You see, folks, you're going to be guaranteed entry today. You're going to be guaranteed entry today into this stadium because you have a ticket. You're going to be guaranteed entry. You're not going to be denied entry. You're guaranteed entry because you have a ticket today. Well, is God going to guarantee your entry on the day of judgment? Is he going to let you into his everlasting kingdom? His everlasting doors? And the only way that can happen is if you become reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to turn from your turn from your sin, to turn to Jesus, to turn from your life of rebellion, to turn from your life of anarchy, to turn from your own way, to turn to the risen Savior, to save you from the wrath to come, to lay down your life at the foot of his cross and say, not my will, but your will be done, O oh God. That is the only thing that's going to matter. You must be born again, reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. As the Bible says, now then we are ambassadors as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ that be reconciled to God. The Lord Jesus Christ was hung upon a cross. He suffered the wrath of God for the sins of his people. 
You understand that he came in mercy to save his people, to not to, to, so that they would not die in their sins and be thrown into everlasting hell. Because God is righteous, he's holy, and he's just. He must punish evil. He must punish sin. And the same thing with an earthly judge. What shall we expect an earthly judge to do to a wicked criminal? They're going to execute righteous judgment. How much more shall the judge of all the earth do right? Turn from your evil ways. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to the risen Savior to be saved. And turn from your sodomite ways to the living God, the living Christ, the only one that can save your soul. Understand the urgency here today that we are sounding the trumpet of alarm, that though it is a beautiful day in Nebraska, the sun is setting, blue skies, the birds are chirping, it's the end of summer, but the fact of the matter is, if you died right now apart from Christ, you'd wake up into an eternal hell. Eternal hellfire, separation from God forever and ever. That is the reality, and we come here to warn you to flee from the wrath to come, to trust in the risen Savior to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who came into the world to fulfill the righteous deeds of the law of God for us, that we might be saved, to go to the cross willingly, to take the wrath of God, to absorb it like a sponge, to absorb the wrath of God for the sins of his people. And he rose again, and when he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid, the sin debt was paid, in the life and death burial of and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be reconciled to God today. The Lord Jesus says, except you repent, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. As we see many college kids here today building their life for this here on earth. But have you taken into account that one day you're going to die and go to a place that is forever? As you will spend eternity in one or two places, and that is heaven or hell, folks. One life will soon be passed. God bless you. Only what's done for God will last. You understand this? Naked we came into this life, and naked we shall go from dust we came to dust we shall return. You brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that you can carry nothing out. That is the reality. Consider your ways today. Consider your ways. Consider the end. And when you are spoiled, what will you do when you stand before God and you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ to plead your case before the Father in heaven? If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from the wrath to come, God will say, depart from me, you cursed, into an everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's the reality, folks. You need to understand this, that though God is slow to anger, he's plenteous of mercy, he will not at all acquit the wicked. He will not let the guilty go unpunished if they die in their sins. God will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. He will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and he will lay low the haughtiness of the mighty. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And it says, he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. He says, I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they've sinned against the Lord. And it says, their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy when he shall come to make even a speedy riddance of all those that dwell in the land. Understand this today. Understand this today, that right now the wrath of God abides upon you if you are not in Christ Jesus. He says, His holy precious word, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. The only grace that you can find is the grace and eternal riches of the Lord Jesus Christ, the image and revelation of God the Father in heaven. He came down from heaven not to do his own will, but the will of him that sent him. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. He knew what he was about to suffer. He knew that he was about to drink the wrath of the cup of the Almighty God for the sins of his people. And he was trembling so much so that he sweat great drops of blood. And he said, oh, if it, 
if you will, let this cup pass from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, O God. And that is what you must come to. You must come to your own Gethsemane, where you lay your life at the foot of his cross, repent of your sin, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of men, the only one that can save your soul. Understand this, folks. Understand this here today, that you're one heartbeat from hell. If you died apart from Christ, you'd wake up in hell. Just think about that. Just how you woke up this morning, if you died apart from Christ, you'd wake up in hell. In everlasting hell. Everlasting conscious torment in the lake of fire. What a fearful thing. It'd be better for you to have never been born than to die apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. As you'll suffer the vengeance, as the Bible says, you'll suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. It is the love of God here today to warn you. As a neighbor would warn his fellow friend that his house is burning and it's coming down to the ground and he will perish if you don't flee from this place. And so we come to you today to warn you to flee from the wrath to come. Even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bear forth good fruit is hewn down and thrown into the fire you must be born again reconciled to god through the lord jesus christ god made him the lord jesus christ to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made 